Hello, hello and welcome to your NARSA weekly update for the week commencing Monday the 21st of October 2024. It's Gary here again and as promised last week, this is our happy 200th episode of the NARSA weekly update. 200 episodes, 200 times over the last, what's that, almost four years that we've been doing this, I've sat down and talked into your ears about all things NARSA, all things Rangers and the odd other bit and piece of periphery hilarity and such. And you know what? I would love to be chatting to you today, celebrating closing the gap and seeing a positive response after an international break. But as I was just saying to some pals yesterday, our team just seems to be getting worse, unfortunately, and that is just a little bit more of the same and certainly a downer and nothing that I wanted to be talking about on episode number 200. So let's start on the positives before we have to get to the game and I'll go quickly over the game <laughs> this week, I promise. And, you know, so I'm going to just do some thanks here. You know, 200 episodes, I think I mentioned this last week, if I didn't, anyway, 200 episodes of, of any podcast is is an incredible achievement and I, I wouldn't be doing this every single week if people weren't listening, people weren't engaging, people weren't enjoying at least some of the content and that's why it's still where it is for, for right now. So there's obviously thanks for... for um, for that to be given out to some folks. So I want to just do a wee bit of a thanks and a wee bit of a positive thing and a wee bit of an overview of what's kind of happened over the last almost four years. So initially, thank you to, to Brian Campbell for the original idea. I think he was actually back home in Scotland and I did a, a podcast interview. Now, who was it with? Alec Ray and Mark Hately, I think it was. And and he had said that the guy, the producer had said, look, if you guys want to do anything from a NARSA perspective, let me know. And that kind of was the, the the initial part of the idea where Brian messaged me saying, is that something we should maybe think about? It might be a good idea. I tinkered around with some, some apps, found one that I liked. I remember the first episode, I was trying to get it absolutely perfect. I didn't want any any mistakes or anything like that. And and it was like, well, what was it now? Like 28 takes where I'm, I'm kind of like, <clears throat> hello, welcome to the... No, oh, no, that sounds stupid. Welcome to the Narsa. Well, no, should it be your Narsa? Is it my Narsa? Like, the, the, the Narsa? And I just... It's better now, I think is hopefully the best way to say it. But congratulations, thank you to Brian for the original idea for the pod. Thanks also to Chris Lovett down in Seattle, formerly of San Francisco, for his help in basically getting the whole thing set up. You know, this is the type and style of equipment you should use, the software you should use, and, and how you, you get it kind of produced. And he, he does all of our YouTube stuff each week still to this day. And... Quick shout out in case I forget this, come the shout outs time, Chris is also actually moving house today. He's bought a house down in Seattle with his lovely missus and his lovely daughter Katie and Leona and they are literally in the process of moving house right now. So Chris is the guy that does the YouTube stuff as I just said. It might not be on YouTube today or it might be more tomorrow so I think I'll maybe just put the communication out with the link to the, to the website and get it up there on, on the podcast platforms and such. But thank you to Chris. For that, thank you to Lorraine Spence for all of her support in getting the promotion out for the the podcast each week. Thanks to Connor Gunn, Andy Carey, previously on the social media side for doing what we can to, to get a wee bit more reach on that. Personally, thank you very much to both my love Erin and my beautiful baby boy Leo for putting up with me. I It takes a lot of prep to get this done, you know, that I'm gathering notes and, and doing some prep work on a Sunday to make sure that it's as accurate and as up to date and an upbeat as I can possibly make it and that takes away time from them and and that's not really what I want but they understand it's Rangers, they understand it's Narsa, it's very important to me so they put up with the prep and the recording time that goes in to the pods. To the guests that we've managed to have on the show, I kind of stopped that as you'll know, I was kind of going hot and heavy on the guests for, I was maybe that was in the first year or maybe the second year but it was just too much, it was too much to do and organise, I was dealing with other people's schedules and stuff and I thought you know what, it's it's all my own time here. I'm just going to kind of take a wee bit of a back seat on that. Not to say that I wouldn't do it again. I really do want to do that in connection with NARSA convention guests and such going forward. But 
I, I did try, now last week I did say that I was going to try and get a, a legend that had an affiliation or affinity with Narsa and I did try to get a guest for this week and we were almost ready to go and then the team kind of did <laughs> what they did and like what, I, I don't want to put a, a genuine Rangers legend, Rangers fan on the spot to be in any way positive about the way things are right now it's just it's not a positive scene that we have at the club for right now so unfortunately that didn't materialise for a variety of reasons but we'll just leave it at that so it's just me that you've got for this week I'm afraid And lastly, but definitely not least, a massive thank you to each and every single one of you for listening. Even if today is your very first time listening or you've been a regular for the past 200 shows, well, I guess the past 199 shows, I can't thank you enough. Truly, I can't thank you enough. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't be doing this. And and then it's meaningful for me and hopefully it's meaningful and informative and edutaining for you too. So a wee bit of a history lesson. So we we started this this pod on the the very first one was the 21st of December 2020 so we started during the the pandemic and in that time we've had four not even four years folks I know I've said that a few times now I just want to reinforce and re-emphasize the point for this particular segment that's coming up in four years We've had four managers. We've had Steven Gerrard, Giovanni Van Bronckhorst, Michael Beale, and Philippe Clement. And we had an interim in there as well. I think we had Steven Davis and maybe someone else. I can't remember. In that time, we've also had three chairmen, Douglas Park, John Bennett, and the interim chairman right now, John Gilligan. We're on the search for a permanent replacement. We've had two... Managing director is what it was called when Stuart Robertson was there. Then it was changed last year to CEO in that time. Um, Of course, the CEO was James Bisgrove before he headed off to Saudi Arabia. And we've obviously had a plethora of other leadership changes and transitions, more so in the last wee while. It certainly seems like that for right now in the past four years too. We lost a number of Rangers legends. They went to the, the pearly Ibrox gates in the sky. And most notably for me during that time was was. Walter Smith passing, Walter Smith's passing, and I won't mention all the other ones that have have done that as as we've gone forward over over the years. There, I don't want to miss out anyone and disrespect anyone inadvertently. And just a word to the wise: there, it's three years this Saturday that Walter Smith passed and and then headed upstairs. So that's incredible. There is three years already. What have we won during that time? I tell you what, I'm going to, I was kind of debating about whether to mention that for this, for, for this episode or not, but I was just chatting with my niece Chloe and I'm going to mention it. We did have a Europa League final, which we didn't win. So basically that was a 22 hour experience for me that made me miss my dad passing away so I'm not really sure I look upon that as a as a positive (laughs) experience it was an incredible experience to be there it was brilliant to be in the company of all the folks that that I was there with but uh, we didn't win so what have we won in those almost four years three trophies we won the league in 2021 we won the Scottish Cup in 2022 and the League Cup in 2023 three trophies in four years if we are any other club apart from that mob across in the East End, that's a brilliant return in three years. A league championship, a Scottish Cup and a league cup for Glasgow Rangers Football Club. That tells a bit of a story, doesn't it? It's garbage, the return we've had. And what we've done as fans is we've done absolutely everything that's been asked of us during the time. And You can even go back to 2012. We went over and above for everything that we've gone through and the club aren't doing their part is it a changed competitive landscape a changed business landscape a changed football landscape possibly probably we should be big enough and we're certainly storied and historyed enough to be able to change with the times we've proven that over the years and decades and century and a half that we've been in existence so what is going wrong that's a bigger story maybe for a different pod but yeah it's been a bleak time and I say that because I would love to have done this pod over the years to a point where we've just had unprecedented success, there's been trebles in there, there's been hat tricks, there's been fantastic old firm games, there has been 
there has been hat tricks probably I don't actually remember any off the top of my head we have had some victories we have had some old firm victories and such but it hasn't been sustained and that's changed that changes the psyche of the pod it changes the atmosphere of the pod and it changes your listening consumption of the pod because if you have a good experience you'll be like you're trying to consume as much Rangers content as you can if it's a bad experience watching a team you don't want to consume anything there's certain weeks by the way <laughs> that I don't want to record this pod I'm like what am I going to say how am I supposed to put a positive spin on that this is garbage but I do it every week because I love it and as long as I'm involved with Narsa I'm more than happy to continue doing that then I'm, I'm equally happy to pass on the baton to someone else and, and we'll see what the future holds in terms of of that and what it did do for me personally it also um, helped me be prepared to start another pod on my business side on my self-development self-education journey that I'm on and that's that is quite frankly produced and delivered to, to such uh, a superior quality than it would have been had I not had the experience of the NARSA weekly update so there's, there's a thank you for that too so 200 episodes, happy to be here, happy to be talking to you, I apologise in advance, I need to get on with some depressing stuff and then I'm going to pick it back up again when we get to the get to the shout outs and such. So the game segment, yeah, you've been waiting for this, you know, yesterday's 1-0 defeat of course to Kilmarnock, you know, a draw would have been, I would have taken a draw basically based on the way that the game went but <clears throat> wasn't surprised at all that it ended up being it ended up being a defeat you know you, you kind of when the goal went in like I wasn't jumping off my seat and shouting and cursing at the TV cursing our luck I was kind of like yeah I'm not really too surprised that that happened we have such a weak mentality and trying to see games out and and both sides you know whether we're, we're actually winning and trying to hold on to a lead or whether we're trying to salvage something from the game we just don't have a real storied past on, on being good at that but for me the game really started for us on Saturday afternoon, didn't it? it? Was Saturday morning our time here over in in North America, and at full time at Sharkhead, Aberdeen coming back from two 0 down, almost nicking it, almost losing it in an extra time as well, and then we've got an opportunity to win a game and go within a win, go within a game of of both the, the teams above us. I mean, and so we are. I'm feeling great. It's a new impetus. You would imagine that the squad, the management team. They're looking at what's happening in terms of, of the results and saying, right, this is an even better opportunity. Does it change our tactics? Probably not. Does it change our mentality? It should do. It bloody should do. And going in there and giving it your all. And then it was just a disaster from literally the beginning of, of the game. You know, another absolute shambles of a performance overall. It was just off. It was it was turgid, there was a lack of passion, a lack of inventiveness, a lack of energy, it looks like a lack of desire, the conditions were kind of okay, it seemed to be in terms of, you know, I know there was a storm brewing or maybe uh, kind of in, in play in the west of Scotland overnight and, and maybe leading up to the game, it was just absolutely garbage and it's all the more insulting when I have to watch that at 5am and all, all of my, my blue nose friends have to watch it at 4am on, on the, the west coast. It's just absolutely soul destroying, and the problem is that these games are surfacing all too often for us. You know, name one game this season we've played well. Actually, there's two: the Ross County, but it's Ross County, and uh, Malmo away. I thought Malmo away we were incredible, and so we've got it in us. But that's not the norm. That's that's the exception to to the norm, and the norm is that we are. We are very capable of producing such performances like this. And, you know, there's nothing really to say in terms of, uh, usually I would go through the game and give you some of the highlights and stuff. There, there were none. There were no highlights. And so the positives, the positives for me, it was only 1-0. I mean, they had they had some really good chances. Jack Butland saved us in the first half and, and they, had, they had a couple of right flashed across the, the post that it was kind of, almost more difficult to miss and and such another positive was was the surprise for me that Tom Lawrence had returned and and uh, and did what he did I, I, I secretly privately had said you know once he got injured there <laughs> after scoring the goal against Leon we'll see you next year Tom because that's what his injury record has dictated for us so it was good to see him there yesterday too bad that he didn't didn't really put in a performance but that wasn't just him it was the entire team another positive the weather seemed quite nice it was nice and sunny and it looked quite nice that was that was kind of fancy and 
a positive for me, I do like to be positive, and it's not fake positivity or false at all. It's never intended to be that. I'm just a positive guy. I have a, an opportunity to reflect on what happened and then say, well, here's here's the here's what I think. And what I do think is we do have 30 games to see a turnaround. That's 90 points that are available, and I would much rather see a blip at this end of the season rather than at the other end of the season. Now, last year, <laughs> I'll caveat this with last year, we were in a semi-similar position this time last year, you know, having brought a new manager in and, you know, we're, we're well behind in the league and then we bring it back and then we have an opportunity to go and close out and finish the league and then we flopped at the end. So we bookended the garbage last year with some really good solid stuff in the centre. So... Ah, hopefully we don't do that again. Hopefully we get ourselves back into the title race and then we can make a meaningful contribution to having other teams think again and give ourselves the opportunity to win more matches than we don't and see where it takes us. We're, we're six points behind. You know, we, we were in a worse position this time last year. So I guess technically I think we're one point better off this year than we were this time last year. Or run about that anyway. Please don't quote me on that if it's not 100% true. But... You know, we do have a lot of time to continue to bed these players in, to continue, because we have seen flashes of, of, of decency, uh, you know, and, and, and the odd bit of brilliance here and, here and there from, from the new folks. So continuing to bond, continuing to gel, to continue to get match and training experience with each other is only going to make them better, you would hope. But it is a very, very tough watch to watch Rangers these days. So my positive slant here is we do still have time. We do have time to turn this around and a dodgy result for them and, and you know, a performance for us and uh, you just never know how these things can turn around. Negatives, I mean, basically everything from beginning to end on this game was, was negative. The goal was another load of absolute garbage and it's, it is at this point in the season, it's difficult to see progress in the team. Chris Boyd went off his nut in Sky Sports yesterday talking about we're actually in a worse position or we're certainly no better off than we were when, when Michael Beale left. Yes, I agree, and we have to do something about that. Do we change manager again? I would rather we didn't. I think we've seen enough from Clement that it was more than just that little uplift that you get when a new manager comes in. It lasted for a lot longer. He's had to get rid of, you know, obviously with the financial constraints, get rid of a whole bunch of different players that weren't serving us at all and weren't, weren't doing well and ran out of contracts. So that's, that's money off the wage bill. Bring in some new players. I'm assuming he didn't get his first choice on most occasions. We, we're in, I wouldn't say the bargain basement bin, but we're in a, we're in, well, certainly not in the top tier bucket in terms of transfer targets and such, and of course not qualifying for the Champions League as a, as a bloody nose before we've even really made a start or a dent on the season. But it's it's difficult uh, to comprehend, you know, what the immediate looks like. And the immediate is season 24, 25, and probably 25, 26. I was saying to my pals yesterday after the game, it would be good if you could come out and explain, look, this is typically what this, this is what the process is going to look like. There's going to be a dip and then we're going to hit some plateaus and then there'll be the odd little blimp. And then with three or four transfer windows time, we're going to be in a position. I know that you can't say that, but there's probably a way to educate us to say, Remanage your expectations, do something different, you know, but we're not going to win every game. Like, this is just what's going to happen. You're going to get a performance like that every now and again. It's not as easy as you think. And I tell you, he never says that. He's kind of boring and he's starting to sound a little bit, certainly a little bit repetitive. And it, some of the stuff that's coming out of his mouth now is kind of nonsense. I thought he was better at handling the media than that, but he's under a lot of pressure. And I tell you one thing, which was a breath of fresh air. I was watching TSN last night, and that's a sports channel over here in Canada, and it was highlights of the WNBA Game 5 final where the New York Liberty won their first ever in the franchise. They were one of the inaugural teams uh, for over 25 years or 26 years, something like that, and they won their first championship last night in overtime. Very exciting finish. But the thing that I'm, the reason I'm telling you that is their managers came out, both managers of, of different teams, of the two different teams that were in it, came out and they were so refresh, refreshingly honest 
and open and, you know, criticising the officiating, talking about their teams, uh, upping each other in terms of, you know, what they're trying to do. And it was very supportive and very honest and, and very upfront. You know, there was a bit, a bit of swearing in it as well. But one of them had said, and it was actually the, the coach of the losing team, she says, officiating isn't that difficult. Being a referee isn't that difficult. You just call the play that you see. You just call the play that you see. And none of this garbage or whatever it was she said. And it was brilliant to see that. Not the the kind of monotone, boring and uninformative garbage that were fed, not just from the Rangers manager, by the way, from everyone. And, you know, you look at the premiership managers and stuff and it's the same. There's not a lot of emotion, not a lot of personality there, not a lot of entertainment or opportunity to even have information that we could we could debate or we could in some way use. So maybe we just infuse a wee bit of that back in to that. That was that was kinda that was kinda fun. Anyway, back to the negatives. <laughs> You know, honestly, I think I've said this before. I think we'll look back on this period of time, this complete nonsense circumstance and situation that we found ourselves in for quite some time, on and off the field, by the way, and acknowledge that it's it was basically unrealistic to expect anything other than what we got or what, what we're getting right now. It's just very, very difficult in the moment to accept it, you know, because we should be beating Kilmarnock and Kilmarnock. We should be. But yesterday's result wasn't really a surprise. And not from a doom and gloom, oh, that I knew that was going to happen, nothing good ever happens to us, it's always the bad stuff. But it's just not a surprise because we've proven that we've been able to be beat by Kumar like over a number of years, by the way. It's not just this season or, or last season. Even, <clears throat> you know, we're just, we're just in a situation where we're running out of excuses. Everything has come home to roost in terms of the boardroom and with, with the team. And... <sighs> The gap between ourselves and that mob from the East End can be explained with some rationality to it in terms of the, the disparity of resources, financial resources primarily. They're, they're just a better run club than we are, certainly for right now. How do we explain that with Aberdeen? Because we've got much more financial resources at our, at our disposal than Aberdeen have. And with the result, I know it's only eight games in, so I'm not going to contradict myself here, but with the result and by all accounts performance, I didn't watch any of it, I'm not interested in any other team other than Rangers, you know, it doesn't seem like it's a bit of a flash in the pan. It seems that they've got themselves kind of organised. This guy knows what this guy knows what he's doing and and he's obviously getting getting a confidence to come back from 2-0 down at Shark Head is, is, a, is a very impressive result there. So... How do we explain it with Aberdeen? Are they a better run club than us? Possibly, probably, maybe. I don't know what the answer to that is. But all I know is that it's demotivating, it's kind of demoralising and it's getting boring. You know, I mean, I look back on 200 episodes and we haven't had a lot to shout about, you know, and what does the next 50 episodes look like? You know, the next 52 in the next year, are we going to be in a better position this time next year? I have no idea. And that's kind of sometimes exciting most of the time it's not. I don't like having no idea. I like a wee bit more predictability <laughs> in my Rangers life. Please and thanks. In terms of stats for the game, 68% possession to, to Rangers. Kilmarnock knew that they could give Rangers a ball and we weren't going to do a whole bunch with it, to be perfectly honest. We had nine shots on goal with three shots on target. We did hit the post. Had a brilliant chance for Igaman or Igmani at the very end. Very unlucky to go past the post and, and get that equaliser, which would have been something. But uh, other than that, it wasn't it wasn't good. And Kilmarnock had six attempts on goal with three on target and, of course, scored the one. And what about the diarrhoea for the goal? Oh, my word. John Suter goes and marks Cristiano Ronaldo completely out of the game on the, what was it, the Wednesday night or Tuesday night, whatever day it was. And then, and then he goes and hesitates and the boy just comes in and... Oh, oh dear, I don't know. Anyway, on the referee watch, uh, Stephen McLean did okay. I don't, I don't have any qualms with any of the stuff um, that he did. I actually recall him kind of do, doing us a bit of a favour because uh, there was someone who was on a yellow card and then had a bit of a foul after that. I can't even remember who it was now. But anyway, um, yeah, he did okay. 7 out of 10 for him. Nothing controversial or anything like that. In light of being Rangers fans, we always have another game coming up at some point and this time we are into back into the thick of action in the Europa League and then back to league action on the weekend. On this Thursday the 24th of October at 3pm Eastern Standard Time, that's 8pm UK, we are playing the team that's now known as FCSB, which is 
to the folks that are kind of of my vintage, it's to a book of rest, and that's at home. Now, this is, I've been hearing and reading that this is apparently of the of the fixtures, the eight fixtures that we have, this would be one of the, the weaker teams that we would play and one of the best opportunities for us to get three points in the back. I don't know if I'm buying that because they've won both of their games thus far in the Europa League and they'll be already after just a few games they'll be looking at securing nine points which by all accounts would be a good spot to be in to certainly secure a playoff place and you know get into the knockout part of of the tournament so the way that we're playing I have no idea I mean I, I literally don't I just said that that of what Rangers is going to show up and I have no idea how good this team are but if they've got six points from a possible six this is no easy game like that so so let's not count our chickens before they hatch and, and show up and give a, a proper European performance the atmosphere and the enthusiasm for this game would have been tenfold higher had we have won that game yesterday and you know thought that we were on an up tick instead of a downward spiral second game for the week is on sunday the 27th of october 10 a.m eastern standard time 3 p.m uk and that's at home to the team from the most beautiful town in the entire universe and that's st mirren from paisley of course and they're on a bit of a downward spiral too. They've lost three of their last three league games. So I guess we'll see how this one goes. And we should win that game if we show up and, and put in the requisite effort. Effort. RTV was, was good on the weekend by all accounts. Didn't hear anything on that. Now back to positivity. Let's go here, Gary. And I do have... A couple of shout-outs, a couple of good shout-outs, and then a wee bit of a thing about the women's team. And the first one I'm going to give out to is Glenn and Vanessa Brotherston, who are right now in Jamaica to renew their wedding vows. They did actually, they, they did get married during the pandemic, and they were supposed to have a bigger do during the pandemic, but the pandemic was the pandemic, and they didn't have a chance to do it then. So they left yesterday, which was actually on Glenn's birthday, so happy birthday for that as well Glenn and they have about 50 people headed to Jamaica to celebrate with them this week and they will be watching the game he tells me on a catamaran tour or excursion this Thursday I don't know what the reception is going to be like out there so I'm not 100% sure you're going to get it clear that might not be the worst thing based on the sort of Rangers teams that can show up Glenn but congratulations and um very, very well done for, for doing that follow-up there. You know, I'm sure a lot of people would just kind of go, ah, we missed it, it was a pandemic and that was it. But obviously your relationship is so very important to you and from what I see on social media, you are a very, very lucky man and absolutely punching above your weight there, my friend. <laughs> but congratulations to you both. I'm sure that'll be a fantastic time. And a very late entry that literally came in seconds before I started to record is a very happy... Happy 30th birthday on the 25th of October. So what's that? The 25th is or Thursday, Friday, something like that this week. To my good friend Sam Bell, the son of my very good friend Martin Bell. And Sam was voted the most handsome man in Seville for the Europa League final, voted by me. Um, you know, it was quite a, an independent vote. On that, and he was also voted the most handsome man in Toronto 2023 because he made an appearance on the Tam Plunkett Blue Night there as well. So that's came up quick. I remember talking to Martin about that a while back, and, and, and there's a bunch of boys heading down to do some golfing and partying in Florida next week. So they're going to have a great time there. Unfortunately, I can't make it, but I'm hoping that we maybe get a wee FaceTime and share a couple of beers over FaceTime to celebrate this momentous occasion. 30 years years old Sam congratulations happy birthday and all the very best for next week my friend on to the women's team this is typically where I do the women's team updates they, they stuttered again yesterday that's the third draw in a row and by the way it was like a 93rd minute equalizer that they had away to Hibs and that's not really inspiring for them is it you know that's not that's not a good look for the women's team however if you look at this a little bit more prag pragmatically, and this is a bit more positive, I guess, if, if we could do that, the top five teams after 11 games, well, that mob from the East End have only played 10, but after, let's say, 11 games for the majority of the teams, top five teams are separated by just five points. 
and that features new leaders. Glasgow City Rangers are now one point behind, joint with Hearts, by the way, um, and and then you've got Hibs, and then you've got uh, that mob, Glasgow City Rangers, Hearts, Hibs, and that mob in the top five. So I know it's still kind of relatively early. I mean, I guess that's almost a halfway point for the women's team now that I think about that, but the gap doesn't seem to be quite what it was before in terms of it was literally a three-team league, and it may end up being that as the season progresses, but Hearts and Hibs are really up there, really, really doing some 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 good work there. So you remember Hearts was the team that really started the rot for the women's team to unfortunately um, re- relinquish their title bid last year and lose it on goal difference when they, when they had a draw. I think it was nil now. I can't remember, it doesn't matter. But Hearts and Hibs are doing some good work now. So it's more competitive, which is kind of what you want, as long as Rangers win <laughs> as you go forward. But they're not blowing away the teams like they were. And Glasgow City are continuing to be strong. If that mob from the East End wins their game in hand, I believe they go a point behind us and a couple of points behind Glasgow City. So it's all to play for as they move into the second half of the season. Another shout out for the Narco Curry weekend in London, Ontario, and that's from the 13th to the 16th of February. There's going to be a meet-up on the Thursday. The Friday is going to have a brewery tour and an ice hockey game at the London Knights. Saturday is going to be possibly Hearts versus Rangers, if not on on the Sunday, depending on our European stuff and, and probably maybe t- TV coverage as well. They kind of do it about six weeks in advance. And that's going to be at Scott's Corner, home of the London Rangers Supporters Club. And then, of course, on the Saturday, there's going to be a curry, which is why they call it the curry weekend. And then on the Sunday, it will be Hangover Day, which they call the farewell event. <laughs> And that's the hair of the dog day. So that will be good. If you've got any questions or inquiries about that, please email narco2025 at outlook.com. On the convention update, 234 days and 33 weeks till we descend upon Kissimmee and Osceola County. That's June the 12th to the 15th at Omni Orlando at Champions Gate. You know, it's a tough sell to be super positive about organising a very big party on our continent here after the debacle that has been Rangers over the last wee while. But we do have we do have business to conduct, so I'll just go through this quickly. We have John Brown and Mark Haitley confirmed. We have the alcohol pricing confirmed. We have the rooms out for sale. We have the tickets out for sale. The golf, I did reach out to the golf fellow last week and he got back very politely saying, you did know there was hurricanes here, Gary. We're kind of busy tidying up from that. You'll get your contract when you get it. That's my words, not his words. <laughs> he was very polite about it, but we should have the contract for that fairly quickly here. We've got everything all organised. I just want to make sure that says this what it should say and what we agreed on, and then we'll get that organised. And the uh, we are continuing to work with Five Stars on some VIP announcements and we've got some communication support in, uh, on the offing or pending from Rangers over the next wee while. So I'll have some information to share with you over the next couple of weeks and we'll look out and see what that means. But it's a, as I say, it's a bit of a tough sell for right now trying to get excited for an event that is, um, what's that now, nine months away? Are we? It's eight months away? Eight months away, something like that. Oof, it's coming in. It's coming in. So, yeah. On to other business. We have we had our executive meeting last week, and it was good. We went through all of the planning for NASA 2025. Talked about RTV. Talked about finances. Talked about the the game dues and membership dues that clubs have to pay. If you have not paid your membership fees for this year, you are incredibly late. You're breaching the constitution, no less. And and it would be much appreciated if you could get onto the people who are managing your club and get that information in. If you haven't received any correspondence from us, sometimes email addresses get changed. Please do give me your updated email address and I'll make sure that gets into Sandra's hands and we'll get the updated information there that we need. But we need to get going on the finances here so that we can get Rangers TV paid on their first instalment. Good meeting. Great to see everyone. And we were kind of convalescing about how difficult it is to be a Rangers fan right now while getting the business done so that's what we managed to do on the communication front the Jers guide there are the Rangers women's team highlights from yesterday's draw at Hibs interestingly and maybe this is just a sequencing thing 
but there was no away days. Usually we always have an away days when Rangers are away, but we didn't have a segment there, certainly not listed on the Jers guide for the away days for the Kilmarnock. And I'm not sure if that's because it was absolutely garbage <laughs> um, or there's some other reason and that they've decided not to put it out or not to put it out early in the week. I'm not sure. Fans that are happy to watch the away days would want to see it anyway. You know, so I would I would recommend that you'd be consistent and put that out there if, if it was intentional to, to leave it out. If it's just a glitch in some way, um then that's okay too. Tomorrow, loan review Wednesday, the press conference for the Stuart Bucharest game, and there's also a feature on RTV for the women's international preview. It's they they go into their international break. Hopefully they come back from their international break better than we did. You know, we got back to that stupid curse thing that we've seemed to have had since Stephen Gerrard took over. And uh, we'll see how that goes. On Thursday, we've got the Stuart Bucharest game. There's a Conan, Conor, Conan, Conor Barron interview about the, the Stuart Bucharest game. And then there's a production from RTV Studios, which um, is, is goes through the 1964 League Cup. And I don't know too, too much more other than that, but I'm looking forward to seeing what that is on Thursday when they get that published. On Friday, we have the under-18s, Rangers under-18s versus the Merlin under-18s at the training centre. And the that's a 4pm kickoff, 4pm UK kickoff. Not so much going on, not so much of anything going on, sorry, on Saturday and then on Sunday we're at home to St Mirren. So we'll be back at Pinbar here in Calgary and I'll pour you a pint. If that's your jam on Sunday, I suspect there will be five people there on Sunday with the, with the way that we people tend to vote. I'm actually probably more than that, maybe eight. But it's not a good time for, for getting bums in seats right now and we need the team to start performing better for that to happen. Uh, other communication items, we did have the chairman's uh, most recent update that he sent out. Good to hear from him again. Uh, not a whole lot of information we, we didn't really know, but some, some kind of periphery updates on things that are ongoing that... Um, that the chairman cares about, you know, an update on the search in terms of, <clears throat> you know, shortlisting some candidates and such. Uh, the main message I got from that was stop with the pyrotechnics, the flares and such, because we are getting fined. And that's, in, that's that's I mean, it's not an insignificant fine. It was something like, I don't know, 13,000 euros or something like that. I mean, that's money the Rangers can't afford to just be paying to UEFA because the fans decide that they want to see something shiny and smoky. At, at a game just stop doing that folks it does look kind of cool you know but do it somewhere else <laughs> don't do it at the game you know um, and it's just it's it's handicapping us and, and good for him for, for, for calling that out and, and getting that organised there there is the International Coaching Federation coming up the 3rd to the 6th of April I'll keep the link on that and we do have the charity ball coming up here on the 2nd of November so that's What's that? Two weeks on Saturday, I think it is, probably is. And that's at the Double Tree by Hilton in the centre of Glasgow. So that will do it for this week, my friends. Kind of happy to be talking about football again, but not the kind of football that they served up for us yesterday. As always, I'd like to take this opportunity once again on this 200th episode to thank you very, very, very much for taking the time to listen. I really, really genuinely do appreciate it. Please do share it with some other people that you think might enjoy it. And here's to just getting right back into the thick of things. There's no other way to do it and how best to do that with two home games against two teams that I'm hoping that we will get three points from each of those games from. Take care, all the very best, and I will see you next week for episode 201. Until then, follow, follow.